Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. And here, almost on time, because as of this video, Akuni has not released yet, and hopefully this will release <laughs> before she does. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new two other units that are going to be on this pickup summon. So let's go. Before I do, it's probably good. I didn't realize until uh, yesterday that I haven't mentioned this at all. These banners, if you're just looking for a general sense of should I summon on them, the answer is you should only summon on these banners if you like the units on them. They are good and they can have their uses in various kind of contents. But in general, it's better for people who are big fans of the character who have been waiting a year to potentially get more MP copies. These are usually what they're for. For newer players, it's usually better to just wait for to make sure you have one of the big supporters like Castoria, Oberon, Summer Scotty, uh, Koyanskaya. Having one of them, and then once you have them going for someone that can pair good with them, like Rikyu, for example, uh, for Summer Scotty, or Jonah Alter for, or Morgan for uh, Koyanskaya, and uh, Summer Ibuki for Castoria. So, let me just say that up front, <laughs> but that's not going to stop me from talking about these units if you're interested about them. So, with that out of the way, <laughs> let's talk about it. Akoni, as I said right here, she should be showing up on today. And then uh, Majin, Majin Okita or Akita Alter, as she's called, will be here two days later on the 14th. But Okoni is right now. So let's take a look at Okoni. This should be very easy because they're very easy units to talk about. Azuma no Okoni, she is a caster. She has two quick, one arts, two buster. She has four hits on quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, and five hits on extra. Her first skill is the Arigato Dance. B increases on quick performance and buster performance for three turns, and then gives herself an evasion for two attacks, three turns. Second skill is the Puppet Kagura A, increases on critical star absorption for a single turn, and then increases on critical damage for one turn, and then grants self a debuff on attack buff for one turn, which inflicts defense down by 10% for three turns to enemies when critical attacking. The absorption is 1000, and the crit damage is 100% on a cooldown of 5. Her third skill is the Shrine Maiden of the Seal, B+, reduces one ally's skill cooldown by 1, charges own MP gauge, gains crit stars, 50% up to MP gauge, 15 crit stars on a cooldown of 7. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, territory Creation Kagura C. Her passive skills are Territory cre Creation Kagura C. <clears throat> Item Construction Karakuri. New Okoni Obu uh, Kabuki EX. And her third append skill is an Anti Pretender Attack Damage Aptitude. Her rank scenable Phantasm is the Okoni Johachi Ban Uzumo Origami Kabuki, or the Okoni Repertoire, the Kabuki of the Uzumo Wild God. It's a rank C Noble Phantasm, it's quick, it's a barrier type, it hits 10 times, it reduces one enemy's quick resistance by 20% for 3 turns, deals damage to them, uh, the damage is 1200 at uh, MP level 1 and it's 2000 at MP level 5. She also deals damage, extra damage to demonic enemies, 150% at charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 200%, and that is a Kony. <clears throat> some positives about her if you're specifically fighting an assassin demon she's wonderful at killing them <laughs> she will absolutely take them down her being quick and usually because of the focus that quick has it'll be able for her to be able to get a lot of crit stars and get it pretty easily <clears throat> she has two buster cards which works well with uh the new summer scotty because summer scotty obviously gives 100 percent up to buster um <clears throat> to buster damage on crit damage uh, so that'll be 200%, and then combine this with this third skill. Even if it's not your main focus on it on the buster, obviously you're going to be doing a lot of damage. And she has the ability to give her own quick card some more crit damage to go along with it, so it all works out. Some other things that are uh, a nice little bonus, like for example the Shrine Maiden and the Seal. Reducing one ally's skill cooldown is actually something that you can do to make her be able to get back arcs... Um, Noble Phantasm. The reason I say this is just to explain it because it's very silly. So in uh, on NA, this isn't apply in JP. In JP, they got you don't do this anymore because you have the append skill right here, uh, right here. But on NA, where we don't have these append skills yet, um, <clears throat> if you look at her Noble Phantasm, she charges on MP gauge and then increases on MP damage for three turns. It's on cooldown to seven. So therefore, with two coin skies, you'll be at one turn left. So you need a unit that will get you to that last bit. And Summer Ibuki is typically better for this, but you can use a Kony if you have her, which is funny. She doesn't buffer in any way, but it is something that you can do. 
Um, so yeah, that's her main use cases. And the big negative that she has is that even though I think she's a very good single target caster, she's actually the only one for quick uh, in the game at the moment. Uh, I think that includes JP. I don't think they ever released another one. Uh, the only negative is that a lot of people just don't like using single target casters. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I love single target casters and I wish I actually had her. But there's plenty of people who just say, I would rather just use a Berserker, and that's fine if you want to go down that right. A Berserker will be able to kill something just as well, better usually than a caster. Even if both of them are single target, they will usually kill better. Um, but if you're someone who cares a little bit more about, you know, fighting element to element, I want to fight the advantage and I want to have them have disadvantage when they attack me, then a single target caster will be your kind of go for for it. But in general, it's very niche if you ever want to use a single target caster. Like even I love my single target casters, they don't get used a whole bunch, but when I do use them, I love using them. And there you go, that's that's Okoni. Very simple unit. Um, next, best of luck if you're going for her today. Next is, there she is, Okita Alter. Okita Alter, she's an alter ego, obviously. She has two quicks, one arts, two buster. Five hits on quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, and five hits on extra. All her skills have also been buffed, which is funny to make a mention of it, just to show you how much they've had to buffer over the years. Um, her first skill is Kyokuchi, A+, plus, increases on quick and buster performance for three turns, and then also gives uh, bonus damage against sky attributes for three turns. It is 30% for all three of them on a cooldown of six. Her second skill is Persistence B+, plus, charges on MP gauge, increases on critical star absorption for one turn, and then increases on attack for three times three turns, 30% to NP, 500% to absorption, 20% to attack on a cooldown of six. Her third skill is Boundlessness A+, plus, increases to own MP damage for three turns, overcharges on MP by two stages for one time three turns, and then grants self-innovation for two attacks three turns. It's 30% to MP damage on a cooldown of five. Her two passive skills are Magic Persistence B and Independent Action A. Her third skill is the Anti-Caster Attack Damage Aptitude. And a noble phantasm is the Zekin Mukio Sunden Decisive Blade, the Endless Three Stages. It is rank A, hits seven times, deals damage to all enemies. At MP level one, it's 300% damage, and if you get her all the way to MP level five, it's 500%, and then she produces her buster resistance for three turns, which does not apply first like Akoni's does. That means that you can only take advantage of this with the attacks that come afterwards. Uh, charge level one, it's 30%, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 50%, which it might be actually kind of possible with this right setup. Um... So yeah, I really do like Okita Alter. I think she's a cool unit. Uh, the thing that's nice here is that actually, funny enough... Oh, fuck. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. Uh, the thing I was going to say, the cool thing here is that when you combine her uh, skill right here, which increases the 2x2 uh, two two stages, the overcharge, and then you combine it with someone like Himiko who also gives two overcharges, that will make it actually possible to get the Buster Resistance down by 50%. Not consistently because it's a very specific team, but it is cool. It actually is possible to do it, and I've done it before in the past, and it is nice, but it's also very much a gimmick type of thing. So, yeah, I think she's a very cool unit. Um, her main thing is doing a lot of damage, so there's not really much to say as far as that goes. It's a very simple unit in terms of looking at it. It's like, yep, MP damage. Yep, charge owned MP. This is good because this lets her be able to be used with um, two coin skies and an Oberon. Uh, to do a buster loop, which if, uh, I'll explain it just again, which is any 50% starting CE plus mana loading, which is the first skill, second skill right here, will give her 70%, and then you use the 30%, then you go double Koyan, and then at the final turn, she'll be able to have this cooldown back in time, and you can use this skill and Oberon 70% NP to let her have another Noble Phantasm. Shoot it off, and you're good. Very nice that she has this. Um... This gave her just a little bit more damage, was the most newest uh, buff that they gave her. So she's a very solid unit that is only really held back by the fact that she is Alter Ego. And the reason that this holds her back is that it makes it so that she can't really fight um, very well in mixed in mixed fights. Like the most obvious example would obvious, would be the, the hands. The, if you ever tried grinding for hands in there, you'll f sometimes fight a... Uh, man, what is the best way of... I don't remember the exact pairings, but it's like... Um, a Saber, a Knight class, and a Berserker. And if you ever go against anyone of the negative, which is of the, the a Saber, Archer, or Lancer, you're going to be doing less damage, and that really sucks because it can hurt a whole bunch. But there are also a couple grind nodes where they will throw in a, um, 
something to just completely screw you up and unfortunately Okita Alter will suffer due to her class in those specific instances. Um, but if you can play around that, then you're going to have a very nice unit that can do a decent good chunk of damage, and it's also Okita, and Okita looks cool as hell. This is a cool look. I also forgot to mention it, but she does have a costume which lets her be Rengoku, which changes the gender to unknown, because Rengoku is a sword with a very cool voice, but still a sword. <laughs> so that is it for these two units. Best of luck to you if you're summoning for either one of them. Um... Like I said at the beginning, it's likely better for you to <laughs> skip if you were not already planning on summoning for it. But if you're already planning on summoning for it, nothing I said here really changes your attitude towards summoning or not. It's really more for people who would like to know, which I think there's actually, I can actually confirm now, there are a decent amount of people who just don't know and would like to hear an opinion on them just so that they can make the decision for themselves if they want to summon or not. So there you go. That's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to get back to work now. Until next time, peace out. Bye.